Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis and welcome back to TheBasis.net. Today I'm going to show you how to control the different parameters of your Source Audio effects pedals using Ableton Live. This is a really cool trick. I guarantee you don't want to miss it, so stick around. <laughs> So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just paint you a quick picture, all right? Pretend you have a pedal board at home and it's loaded with a bunch of great sounding pedals and those pedals give you precisely the tone that you're going after. You plug in, it sounds great. There's still a couple of drawbacks. Check this out. Number one, you have to actually stomp on those pedals with your foot in order to make them work. And I know that's actually not that big of a deal. We do it all the time, but let's just pretend that that's a problem, okay? Another thing is you can't really tweak these pedals and play at the same time, especially as a bass player. I mean, I got, you know, both my hands on the instrument. Maybe with one foot, I could grab an expression pedal or something like that, but I'm really limited to actually controlling the knobs of the pedals while I'm playing. And then also there's just some things that I'm not gonna be able to do live I'll have to do them in post. I'll have to do them in the studio because they're time-based or they're just so meticulous that I couldn't possibly step on them and create the sounds that I'm going for. First of all, just let me say that, I mean, I, I say the issues, I said they're problems. I mean, they're not really. It's just called playing with a pedal board. It comes with the territory. So it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with having to step on pedals or work an expression pedal with your foot. It's not a big deal. We do it all the time. However, there's a really clever workaround that involves a little bit of technology, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. The software we're gonna be using is called Ableton Live. Um, you're gonna have to download it. There's a free version that I think works for 30 days, and then after that, you'll have to uh, purchase it, or it, it won't be able to save or export files anymore. Uh, but it's fully functional for a month. Now, we've been using Ableton for years to um, launch backing tracks to play to. DJs have been using it to launch clips and loops. You can control your lighting show with it. You can launch video elements or text and lyrics um, and graphics. Uh, you can play VST instruments from it just like you would in the studio. It is an awesome, awesome piece of software. And today I'm gonna use it to control source audio pedals kind of the same way that you would use plugins. So the first thing I need to do is show you how to set it up. So check this out. The first thing you need to do is download this piece of software here called Neuro Desktop. You can get it from the Source Audio website. The next thing you need to do is you need to plug in your pedal with a USB cable. Um, the pedal comes with one, I think, so it's not that big of a deal. And go over to Ableton Live. And over here, I'm going to go to Preferences. And I'm going to go down to the, what is it, the MIDI tab. And I want to look for this here. I've got a lot of MIDI devices plugged in, but the one I'm looking for is this guy, USB MIDI device. On the input side, I know that this one has to be checked. This one might have to. I'm not positive. <laughs> but for sure, uh, make sure this one says on. And then the next thing you need to do is just create a blank MIDI track. I've got one right here. And set the output of this to USB MIDI device. So that same one I just looked at in the preferences window, it should be showing up right here. And you want to set the output of this track to your source audio pedal. Now, once you've done that, you wanna go back to this Neuro desktop um, and you wanna click on your pedal. Right now I have an Aftershock bass distortion pedal. And if you hit this little gear icon, it'll pull up this page. And these are all the different parameters that you can adjust in your pedal, which is cool because this pedal has four knobs on it, yet this is all the stuff you can control with it using the app and using Ableton Live. Um, I'm gonna go over this pedal in another video. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I'm just now scratching the surface on what this stuff can do. So in the future, there'll be a link uh, popping up right now that'll take you to this video to show you, you know, all the cool things that this pedal can do. But for now, I'm gonna move past that. So what you do is you come up here to device and click edit device MIDI map. Okay, what happens here is we take all these parameters that you saw before and we can map them to MIDI CC commands. So you can see on MIDI CC1, I've got that to be the left overdrive. On MIDI CC2, I've got that the bypass engage. MIDI CC3, that's the left bass level. And I can assign any one of these to any one of these parameters. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to Ableton Live. I'm gonna create a little dummy clip. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. And uh, this might not show up if you see the piano roll. This isn't what we want. We wanna click on this E. This pulls up our envelopes. Um, and I wanna be editing the MIDI CTRL, MIDI control. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull up, these are the 119 or 127 MIDI CC commands that were in the other uh, application in the Neuro 
app. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull up these commands uh, and start drawing in automation. So you can see they're labeled incorrectly. This one says modulation. This one says breath. They're not going to match the parameters from the other page. But number one still maps to number one. Number two still maps to number two. So check this out. If I go to modulation, this is MIDI CC number one. I come back over here to the Neuro desktop. CC one is my left overdrive. So that means if I come over here and I just grab the pen tool and I start drawing in some automation, right? As soon as I press play on this bad boy, is it going to loop? Yes, it's looping. Check this out. Look at the drive knob on the Neuro app, all right? That uh, effect is changing. Essentially, it's as if I'm grabbing the overdrive knob, overdrive knob on my pedal and I'm changing it, right? And in fact, if I plug in a bass right now and I just play a single note, Right? That um, overdrive knob is just in, in, in a continuous loop. And so what you can do is you can program in where you want your drive to be and you know when you want to come up, when you want to come down, things like your output, uh, you know, where you want your clean dialed in, where you want your frequency, your, your EQ, your mids, your bass, your treble. You can automate all of these things to travel around or you can come over here into live and have like, here's my verse, whoops. And then make another clip and go, here's my, I can't spell today, <laughs> chorus, All right? And then I can launch this one when the verse happens and when the chorus happens, I wanted to do this. And then I can have two different variations, right? Here's the first one. Whoops, let me turn on the volume. Right? So any single one of these parameters can be automated in Ableton. And that's really cool if you're playing the backing tracks and, and you're playing to a click track and things just don't ever change. Um, it's awesome. Everything's locked into the timeline and you don't have to stomp on any more pedals. It's just all ready to go. So that's the idea. What we're doing is we're automating the different parameters inside the pedal so that I don't need to stomp on them while I'm playing. Um, I don't have to grab an expression pedal with my foot or bend down and start tweaking knobs they'll just happen automatically, which is really cool because what this allows you to do, number one, is just, I, I can go anywhere on stage now. I don't have to play in front of my pedal board. I could walk 20 feet away and pedals will, t will turn on and off. Settings will change. That is really, really cool. I can be on the other side of the stage um, and, and my pedal board will just be changing itself. Um, this allows me to do time-based effects. If I have delays or tremolos or stutter effects that need to be boom, like in line with the drum fills and you know the type of production that again, I said before, well, we're gonna have to do that in the studio because obviously I can't do that live. I can't step on a pedal fast enough to make it go you know, or whatever. Well, actually, you can now. You can do that live. You don't need to do it in the studio. You can program it from Ableton, and it'll happen in your pedals. It's really, really cool. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to grab a bass. I'm going to plug into this pedal right here, which is the Aftershock Bass Distortion. Now, again, I haven't done a video reviewing this completely yet, so I'm still figuring out what the sounds are. So that's not what we're, I'm interested in. I'm not trying to show you how good this pedal sounds. I'm just trying to show you that I can manipulate this thing in some pretty cool ways. And I'm pulling this up over here. So take a look at the screen. You'll see these knobs with all of these examples start to change and I'm automating all of these parameters. So here, check this first one out. Do I have sound? Yes, I do. Now, it doesn't hurt that this pedal sounds freaking awesome too. That's such a cool, heavy grinding fuzz tone. But again, you saw that drive knob. It kept creeping up and then it came back down. And I know it sounded like maybe I was digging in harder to get it to push more, but I wasn't. I was playing the same thing. I was doing that the whole entire time and it was getting heavier, it was getting thicker because I programmed it to do that. The next thing I'll do is I'll create um, a gated synth sound. 
Um, if you don't know what gating synths or, or gated bass or gated kick drum, it's common in EDM music. You'll hear that womp, 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 womp. Right, I'm not strumming the note on the upbeat. I'm strumming on the downbeat and it's going womp, womp, womp. So I'm going to automate that in with the drive again. So take a look over here on the screen. You're going to see this knob going like this. You're going to see it jumping back and forth. And that's going to create this gated sound right here. And so that time, I was just chugging eighth notes the whole entire time. But that's not what you heard. What you heard was a right? That's not what I did, but that's what the pedal was doing because I was automating the drive to go up and down and create that gated effect, which again, you can't do with a normal pedal. Not and play at the same time. Again, you could have a buddy help you out or try to get it with your big toe, but I don't recommend it. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna try to create that stuttering effect that you hear in EDM music all the time. Usually you'll hear them before the build up. It's not just someone playing the snare drum, like the audio is being cut in and out. Literally, the volume is riding up and down in groups of eighth notes, 16th notes, and whatever. So um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to automate the level of the pedal from 100% output to no output. Um, and, and you'll kind of hear what that sounds like. And again, a really, really cool effect that I couldn't stomp on my pedal enough times to make it go, -b 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 -b. Like, my foot's just not that fast. So again, this is utilizing technology to make sounds that you otherwise couldn't do. All right, I got one more for you. And this time what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take a more traditional approach. I'm gonna come at this from the angle of like, how would a rock band, how would a, the bass player in a heavy rock band utilize this stuff? So far, everything's been EDM, DJ, studio tricks, and that kind of stuff. Here's something that actually you could probably do this already if you had a multi-effects unit or you know a d distortion pedal, a, a boost, and, um, and an EQ pedal or something like that. The cool thing with this is you just need one pedal, this one source audio aftershock pedal, and you can do all those things. Because if you look at the screen again over here, it's got an EQ section in it. It's got bass, two mids, and treble, and I can set where those frequencies are centered. It's freaking ridiculous what you can do with this pedal. Uh, so I'm gonna start it like this. I'm gonna bring the tone all the way, sorry, not the tone, the bass all the way down to where it's really, really thinned out. And then when the rest of the band kicks in, there's not a rest of the band, but if there was, you're gonna hear all my low end come back in. So let's see, that would sound like this. <laughs> Now remember, this isn't anything new. We've been automating stuff for years. They're called plugins. And the cool thing here is I'm treating my pedals like they're plugins without having to deal with going into a computer, needing an audio interface, dealing with buffer sizes and latencies and sample rates, um, quality degradation, depending on what you're plugged into. This is just a pedal board and it functions like an analog pedal board if you want it to. Because again, there's four knobs on that pedal. I can twist them wherever I want. But if I want to treat them like plugins, I have that option as well. So again, just to drive this home, I think this feature and these pedals are so freaking cool. It's not even funny. If you're in a touring band or you're in a cover band or just anything where like the set or the songs are gonna be the same every time. Uh, you know, we always do verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, out. You know, that type of thing. If you're doing this at church, fantastic. I mean, this is a great way to just program your songs, program your set and drop it in. And now you'll have the same sound night after night. 
And also, if you want to, you don't have to pre-program these things. All the sounds you heard today, I drew in, uh, in in Ableton Live with the pencil tool. And so, you know, the wobbles and the stutters and all that stuff, they happen when I told it to happen, you know, 10 minutes ago before I started filming this. Uh, but I very well could do those things in real time if I wanted to. I don't have to use MIDI clips and pre-program stuff. I could, you know, assign um, ex, uh, expression pedals, knobs on MIDI controllers, or I get that hot hand ring that Source Audio also makes. And I can control any one of those parameters with one of those external devices. So you don't have to pre-program it. If you want to go on a whim, and if you want to be able to control some of those aspects with your hands, with your fingers, with your feet, you totally can. And that allows you to improvise with this stuff and not be locked into it. Now, this isn't the only way to do this with your pedal boards. There's other ways to do it, but Source Audio has made it stupid easy. Um, you don't have to buy a MIDI brain. You don't have to buy, you know, a daisy chain thing where you plug all your pedals into it um, and then, you know, connect it with MIDI and that kind of stuff. Um, it, the, the pedal just has a USB cable. USB straight in your laptop, done. That's all the peripherals that you need, and you can do all the things that I just did. And as far as I know, there's only a handful of their pedals that do this at the moment. I might be speaking out of turn um, when I say I'm almost positive the intention is for all of their one-shot series and all their upcoming pedals uh, to have this feature. So any of their pedals that have a USB output on it, or input, whichever one it is, um, those are the ones that can connect with the app Theoretically, though not all of them are supported yet, I know they're adding new ones all the time. So check with their website, tell them Jamie sent you, uh, and ask them a question if you want to know which pedals can do this. But as far as I know, the intention is all of them. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please leave me a comment below. Tell me what you thought. Click that like button if you feel inclined. Hit that share button. I would greatly appreciate it. Most importantly, go pick up some Source Audio pedals because this technology is unbelievable, and they sound really good too. And again, I'm going to do a video coming up probably next week or the week after where I'm really going to dive into this Aftershock pedal and show you all the different cool sounds it can make. So thanks for stopping by. Take care, and I'll see you next time here at The Bassist.net. Hey, if you like what I do, please click on the subscribe button right here. And if you really like what I do, then click over here to see how affordable it is to join me at thebasis.net. But if you just want the free stuff, then click here to check out whatever YouTube's sophisticated robots think you should watch next. I'm sure they know what's best for you.